All right, uh, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Jim Bouchard. How are you doing, Jim? Oh, it's such an honor to be with you. Thanks so much. Great. And I feel like, you know, as Jim is a lifelong martial artist and a 2004 inductee into the U.S. Martial Arts Hall of Fame, um, and as I'm a recreational martial arts, I feel like I should bow at the beginning to the sensei. <laughs> well, that, well, that was a long time ago, right? Yeah. 2004? Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. that was so long ago. <laughs> yeah. But um, time, time flies exactly. Yeah. And now Jim is a is a is a speaker, a consultant. Uh, he's written uh, he's written multiple books, and he has started what's called the Sensei Leader Movement. And today, what we wanted to talk about was <clears throat> the Sensei Leader Movement and this idea of human uh, human centric leadership and the fact that control and you can't get away with control and command or command and control mm. anymore. Mm-hmm. That you have to empower people. So, so Jim, tell me a little bit about your journey and how you ended up with this sensei leader movement concept well if you want the resume it's not a glorious one (laughs) i was a two-time college dropout a former drug addict that's how i got on the path of martial arts uh it's a long story so i'm going to really condense it Mm -hmm. um i used to think that was a really lousy resume for someone that was working with leadership but Mm -hmm. you know i've come to realize you know that academics generally agree that all leadership these days is situational and I, i agree with that too the best is transformational. Well, that's becoming a big, a big word in, in uh, leadership studies mm-hmm. now, right? So who better to talk about transformation than someone that had to do it to survive? And I learned that process intimately, and it's, you know, it, it applies to anybody in leadership position and, of course, any organization these days. If you're not in that process, if you're not engaged in that process of transformation, right, on an ongoing basis these days, you're in serious trouble. <laughs> So that's that's how it started to launch, you know. Um, and you shared your some of your martial arts experiences. You know, it really did it really did uh, help me preserve my life at, at a certain point, and that it became a career. So I spent you know almost thirty years in in, uh, in mm-hmm. the professional side of that. So uh, pretty neat journey. And what I'm sharing now, the Sensei Leader Movement, was born out of that mostly because people, uh, business people who were taking my classes, were asking me to share more of the philosophy in the business mm-hmm. context, right? And it became just a natural transition. So the more that I, I was invited out to talk about those things, um, and there's nothing that I'm more passionate about than the philosophy of the martial arts. So, uh, you know, that's yeah. what saved my life. I love the physicality, but it was the philosophy that really yeah. turned my life around. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. what I, what I, um, and some of the things um, that, um, you know, you've obviously brought into your work. But um, mm-hmm. one of the things that I, I always found really fascinating about, about martial arts was the concept of, you know, earning a black belt. And people think, mm-hmm. You know, I earn a black belt and I have reached, you know, I, I am now a martial. But actually learn, yeah. earning a black belt is earning your right to become yeah. a student. It's like you know, the first one, step of being right? a real student. Yeah, one of the one of the best masters that I was ever exposed to, Master Nick Serio, is a really, he was kind of a, one of the pioneers in Kempo in the United States, especially on the East Coast. And what a great man he was. You, you meet him on the street and you would think he ran a pizza restaurant. I mean, he was just the most humble, down-to-earth, normal, you know, ordinary guy. Um, small small man, but, you know, built. Big rock hands. He was just incredible. And anyway, he used to define the, the attainment of a black belt as the development of a good learning attitude. He said, mm-hmm. if you do this, you learn how to learn, particularly about yourself, right? And I think that's a great imprint because you hit it right on, on, the, on the head. It's not a. It's not an end of anything. In fact, when I used to promote my black belts, uh, we always had a little exercise after they tied their ranks on. Mm-hmm. I'd say, raise your hand up, reach back, pat yourself on the back. I'd let it last about three seconds. Say, that's it. Let's get back to work. <laughs> <You know? laughs> exactly, right? and yeah. and and that translates over into leadership, right? Because I do Absolutely. think I do think mm-hmm. that you know people can fall. You know, we've all probably been guilty of this. You can fall into the mm-hmm. trap of when you reach a position you know, a senior position and you mm-hmm. think, okay, I am now the leader of this group, team, company, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, and maybe you're tempted to stop learning, stop, you know, and you start mm-hmm. to, as you said, you start to command and control and you sort of draw on maybe some of the experiences you had way back of people who did that. And you think this is the way to mm-hmm. go. It's a big problem. And it's, and it's not with bad intentions most mm-hmm. of the time, you know, uh, a lot of times that issue comes up in workshop because, you know, I'm asking people to really take a look, a hard look at themselves and say, where do you want to learn? Where do you want to grow? You know, how do you want to develop? Who, you know, who do you want to be in the next few years, at least right now? 
And most people, especially in big organizations or senior leadership positions, they have good reasons for not uh, paying attention to their own development. They get busy. Sure. They prioritize other people's growth and development, right? But you, we don't have that luxury, right, as leaders. We have to pay so we have to dedicate some portion of our life to that constant learning and development. If nothing else, because in order to bring more value to the people you serve, you have to be continually growing and changing, right? Mm-hmm. And, and especially in leadership positions these days, because like we said just a few minutes ago, this world, especially the business world, is changing so rapidly. And the pace of acceleration is only increasing, right? So if you want to stay relevant, if you want to stay valuable to the people you serve, you've got to be growing too. Mm-hmm. Not, in, not in exactly the same way as everyone else, but, you know, that there it is. But you got to walk the walk. And, you know, the, the greatest leaders are those people who are always engaged in that process of, of learning. And, and, of course, that's to martial artists. Mm-hmm. That's what true sure. mastery is, right? It's not right. A, an end. It's, it's, a, it's well, I like to say it this way. Perfection is not a destination. It's a never-ending process, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So one of the things, and I'd be interested in, in how, with your, um, with your approach, how, how you help to facilitate this. But one of the most difficult things mm-hmm. with anybody is, um, I think, is self-awareness. And I know this for mm-hmm. myself. It's a tough thing when you have to become more self-aware and realize, you know, where you may need to modify or improve things. But I've always found that in in leadership, that's always been one of the most difficult things, even to help other people become a little bit more self-aware. How how do you yeah. approach that? You know, it's it's an interesting problem these days because uh, I think Gallup did it. You know, they do some tremendous mm-hmm. work to, to help us out with research, right? And one of the biggest deficiencies in leadership today is self-awareness. And it's mostly because of that time factor, people just mm-hmm. stop devoting time to it. And it's because people don't understand what it means, you know, from a psychological point of view. Self, well, self is in the word, so people glom onto that part of it uh, and constantly look in the mirror. That's good. That's an important part, but it's only half of it, mm-hmm. right? True self-awareness is also a, 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 an honest and accurate perception of how other people see us, right? Mm-hmm. So that, and, and in psychology, they call it the external component of it. So there's an internal component and an external component, and you've got to do both. Now, for the internal side, you know, again, we can borrow from our martial arts practice, right? Uh, most of us in martial arts have at least been exposed to some meditation practice. Mm-hmm. And I have a real simple one, and your, your listeners are, are free. It's free to them if you'd like to put a link. Um, people challenge me. to say, how do I meditate? Okay, mm-hmm. well, so I wrote a little book. It takes you about four minutes to read it. There's a video that goes with it. Sit still, shut up, and breathe. Right. <laughs> and, that's, yeah. and that's really about it. Uh, and, and so – and how many people and many people struggle even with that sit still piece? No, exactly. And this time of the year, it's interesting because right around Thanksgiving, I do this for myself, um, and I'll share this practice with mm-hmm. you. We share this at almost every workshop, especially executive workshops. You need to take time for reflection. Mm-hmm. You need to right. You need to dialogue with other people and understand what if if your self perception matches the external perception, and then you have to take some time and reflect. And this is a great time of the year to do it. Uh, I, I say around Thanksgiving because it's not hectic yet, right? You've got some time. Take a little time out to do that. And ask yourself two key questions. And one of them's going to sound really stupid, but it's a terrific question to ask yourself. And I'm not going to help you with it because I don't want to direct it any, <laughs> anyway. Who am I? Ask yourself that question and let, your, let yourself ruminate with that. You, most people are really surprised with what comes back to them. And then the second one for a leader particularly is who do I serve? Now, that one's a little bit more direct. You you need to put faces on that one, right, Mm -hmm. and understand because it changes. All these answers to these questions change over time. Now, usually when I bring that up, people say, well, you should be doing that more often. I say, I know. We should be. We should be doing that on a regular basis. But I understand and respect that people are very, very busy, especially running big organizations. So at least do it once a year. And, And you know what? And do it. Take it out of your work schedule. Not right. out of your personal time, mm. because you'll value it much differently if you make it part of your work schedule. So but, that's that's my advice, and I do it quite regularly. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a that's a that's a great piece of advice, and I like that idea because if you're to if you're to lead people, um, and it doesn't matter what level it is, if you mm-hmm. don't if you don't have good self awareness and a good idea, as you say, of mm-hmm. who you are, and also of you know, the impact of how you operate, then it's really hard to, as you say, to inspire or empower or guide people, right? Right. And like I said, that that external perception has to be in in alignment, mostly, Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? 
of course, from time to time, we all have a different perspective of ourselves than other people. Sure. But overall, that really needs to be in alignment. And we need to know that because sometimes we, we think we're doing something grand and we realize, you no, know, we're falling short. Mm-hmm. Or particularly for leaders, and I, I really do understand this, it, it does get lonely at the top sometimes. We have to discipline ourselves to avoid that, that pitfall. And there's very often times when a leader gets disappointed because they say, you know, they don't appreciate how hard I'm working for them, right? right. Mm-hmm. They don't understand what I do. These are direct quotes that, that I'm sharing from workshops. And sometimes it's a matter of sitting down and say, well, if they don't understand, then there's a breakdown. Yeah. And we have, to, we have to make that connection uh, strong again, right? Mm-hmm. And again, so that, so that gets back to that self-awareness, right? So, yeah. And yeah. then and then so uh, talk to me a little bit more about these, as you said, the, the human centric leadership approach, mm-hmm. because some people when they hear well, command and control is dead and it's more mm. human centered, some people start to think, well, is that going all the way over here? Now it's all about are you happy? <laughs> Do you like me? Is everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, are we <laughs> is everybody happy today? If you're not happy, what can I do? You know, yeah. have you have, can I get you a foosball table? What is it you need to make you? And that's not right. the that's not the essence of it at all, is it? No, I'm sure you understand by now. I'm I'm not the lollipops, puppy dogs, and rainbows <laughs> guy. <right? laughs> no. This stuff is tough. It's hard and. You know, it's interesting that it gets lumped into this world of soft skills. And you know from being sure. a martial artist, some of the soft arts are very powerful, sure. right? And it's sure. the same in this, uh, you know, in – but it, it's the term that people generally understand, so so we'll roll with it. Um, what we're talking about when we talk about human-centric – it's so much fun talking to a martial artist because you'll get this <laughs> right away. Uh, but you know what? Let me preface something. The command and control being dead. Yeah, because uh, you know who gets this? Military people. Mm-hmm. Because you will not meet more compassionate leaders, more dedicated leaders in the military. So sure. we're always singing in harmony. They understand what, what we're driving at here. Human-centric leadership, the way we're defining it, is really the, it's, it's the, Im, the imprint of that symbolism of sensei because of this, right? You, you, you'll understand this. What does the sensei do? A sensei inspires, mm-hmm. empowers, and guides people to their best, right? Yes. That's what a leader should be doing. I believe the three, well, they're not only the most essential assets. I don't know what you could possibly accomplish without these. The asset requirement assets for a leader, loyalty, trust, and respect, right? What can you do without the loyalty, trust, and respect of the people you serve? Mm-hmm. So how do you do that? By inspiring people, by empowering them, by guiding them, by leading with courage and compassion, right? By leading with true wisdom, not just Mm -hmm. knowing a lot of stuff and because that wisdom thing includes that self-awareness component right and so there it is in a nutshell that's what human-centric leadership is all about the Mm -hmm. command and control we have is a vestige really it's not it's not from military really Mm -hmm. and it is necessary sometimes to issue commands don't get me wrong this is about balance not about a static point it's about knowing when to apply these tools just as a martial artist applies different techniques so um command and control in business is left over from that industrial age, Mm -hmm. right? Where people were more or less an extension of a machine. Well, that's not flying anymore, right? If you want, if you want people to give their best, what's the technical term? Discretionary effort, right? Mm -hmm. If you want them to go the extra mile, then for God's sake, you've, you've got to show them that you care about them. You've Mm -hmm. got to engage them on a human level. Mm -hmm. And thankfully people are really, you know, coming back to that all over the world. And it, it, it doesn't matter where we've traveled, and uh, we've been blessed to travel a lot of places in the last couple of years. We see that same yearning. People want to be connected on a human level, mm-hmm. and people perform a heck of a lot better when we can do that. I don't care how technical you know, the, the operation of that organization is. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't, and that doesn't translate um, to you know sugarcoating everything and being you know no. soft about everything, because as you know, like in 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 mm-hmm. martial arts, again, as as the sensei. Um, your job is to m- help people be the best that they can be and, you know, mm-hmm. motivate themselves and bring in. And that and that doesn't always come, especially nowadays, doesn't always come naturally to people and they need to be mm. pushed. But if they no, see well, that not, you're... Well, not, not pushed well, so much. I would differ yes, with that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Encouraged. Yeah, yeah. Right. Guide, guided. 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 Guided, yes. Yeah, um, yeah. But that has to be... Um, but they, but that's done from a place of them understanding that you want the best for them, right? Exactly. That's why that compassion element is so important, right? If we're if we don't express genuine compassion, then people are not they're not going to feel any sense of connection to us on a human level, right? 
mm-hmm. and they're not going to be inspired to do more for us if we want to use that that terminology. But the reason I pushed back on push, you know, <laughs> I mean, General Patton, who's probably at least the mythology around him uh, would say, well, let's let's look at it this way: people that only watch the movie and don't read about him, sure. Uh, would see him as the ultimate command and control authoritarian, right? Mm-hmm. He was an extremely compassionate leader. When you read, yeah. you know, the, right, the memories of the people who worked with him and whatnot, and he said, "You don't, you know, how do you say? It? You drive cattle, you lead people, mm-hmm. right? And that's that's the thing. Drive, push. When you push somebody, what do they do? Naturally, they push back. Sure, right." And that's the thing. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't times when you have to get in there and yell and scream, let's go, let's go. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That, you're right. So one of the strategies we share is be tough yet compassionate. Mm-hmm. And again, right, it's, again, it's so much fun talking to a martial artist because, you, you know, you understand this. No, this idea that uh, compassion, in fact, when people, it, sometimes you have to be even cruel to be compassionate. Mm-hmm. If people equate it too much with kindness, right, or even some degrees of protocol that can be very, very dangerous because there's times when you have to be very, very direct yes. and, and you know that you're going to cause hurt. Right. And we're so afraid of that these days. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. We recoil from that so much. And that that's, that's a horrible thing. First of all, we're not helping people become strong enough to deal mm-hmm. with reality, especially yeah. when we're dealing with kids or, sure. and you know, in the workplace, it's the younger employees, right. That we have to go back and, and help them through this process. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. yeah, no, it has to be tough first. People challenge me that. You say, shouldn't compassion be first? I said, well, we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. At, the end of, at the end of the workshop, they usually see see the reason for the tough part being first. Yeah, yeah and and I agree, and I and I think that's a you know that's a, a byproduct of the of the mm-hmm. world we live in today, where oh. everything has you know the idea of yeah. of being tough, the idea of being rigorous, all of these things mm-hmm. has you know has negative connotations. But you know, you know, as 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 a long time sensei, though, um, you have to be tough to help people achieve what they need to achieve and to make them the best they can be, and also to mm-hmm. give to give them the confidence that they can do. You know, because as you know, in yeah. martial arts, just like in work, people have such huge self limiting beliefs, right? And that's part how, of the how, job is to is to yeah. help them through that. How else do you gain? true confidence. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's by training, by preparation, by exposing yourself to risk and danger and it, it, within reason, sure. you know, within mm-hmm. the parameters of what you're doing. Um, but you have to, you know, take sales, for example. Mm-hmm. How can how can somebody go out, you know, sales, <laughs> anybody in sales experiences disappointment, <laughs> right? That's it. You can't, you can't be in sales <laughs> without it. No, you're not going to hear yes every time you go out. Yeah. Well, how do you how do you deal with that and not just let it ruin your life and ruin your day? Well, you have to expose yourself to the failure as well mm-hmm. and, and not take it as a negative all the time. Sure, you look at it and you say, could I have done better? Sometimes you couldn't. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes it's just accepting it and saying, hey, I did the best I could. It wasn't the right fit. Um, and you move along. Knock down seven times, get up eight, we say yeah. in martial arts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there's only one way to it. It's by exposing yourself to that. Of course, as leaders, we want to bring – or as parents too, right? You want to mm-hmm. bring people up. Um, you know, so that it's not too dangerous <laughs> you sure. don't want people to be hurt and, and destroyed. Um, but you've got to expose them to some uncertainty, some, some risk, some, some element of failure. And yeah. that's, that's critical. And for too long, we've shielded people from that. And, you know, don't get me going on the safe spaces. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I always think it is amazing yeah. to see yeah. it is amazing to see a kid for the first time, mm-hmm. the first time they spar, right? And it's very right. controlled and very and you know, they're all padded up. Mm-hmm. But the mm-hmm. first time they do it and you know, there's a lot of fear and you know, and it depends what age they are too, but there's a lot mm-hmm. of fear involved and then they get through it. And yeah. they survived and suddenly they're in a whole mm-hmm. they've they've stepped over to a whole new world, right? Where they're like yeah. Yeah, you know, I got kicked a bit. I got whatever, but right, right. I, I'm still here, and I learned. And your point yeah. about sales, I think, is a fantastic one because sales mm-hmm. is almost like, you know, you you're you step in the ring, as you say, and you get knocked out eight times, and each mm-hmm. time you figure out how can I avoid that next time, and then the ninth time and the mm-hmm. tenth time you get a win, but you have to you have mm-hmm. to go through that pain to learn. Yeah. No, the research is very clear on that. Um, you know, in business, this research is very important. Successful people fail most of the mm-hmm. time. And, you know, sometimes people you know, look at me strangely when I say that. But, you know, I, I don't, I've got to look for the, 
sources. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got them somewhere in this pile of stuff here. Uh, yeah, that's that's a fact. Successful people fail most of the time. They're the people who take those failures, you know, wring the lessons out of them. Yeah, I don't like the trite thing about, you know, well, it's not a failure. It's just a lesson. No, no, no. It's a failure sometimes. Sure, admit it and, and acknowledge it, embrace it and wring the lesson out of it. The lessons aren't always that obvious, right? Absolutely. You have to go in there and dig for them. And that that's not always comfortable. It's It's kind of painful sometimes. And, you know, again, that's where... I mean, I, I didn't feel such it at the time, but now I can look back and be grateful for my experiences, you know, my self-destructive experiences. Sure. Because that's where I started to learn that, you know, either you're going to get busy living or you're going to get busy dying, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, on a lesser degree, and you talked about the pads, that's a good metaphor because same thing in business, because the other end of the spectrum is someone who just throws someone to the lions, right? Sure. Yeah, without yeah. the training, without <laughs> the preparation. Now you, As a leader, it's your responsibility to to pad your people up a little bit at first, right? And then slowly, slowly intensify the experience, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You don't want to send them, you don't want to send that kid in, no pads, get punched in the face and then never come back again. <laughs> no, you know, you'll appreciate this one's funny. When I was a boxer, my trainer was such a cool guy. He was like a Yoda. And yeah. he, was, he would usually give this advice when our faces were torn off pretty well. You know, he says, he says, don't worry about it, Jim. You always learn more when you lose. And then he'd take a, but he'd take a dramatic pause and he'd say, but some days you just don't feel like learning anything, do you? <laughs> so we have to appreciate that too. We want, we want to, right. We want to appreciate our victories as well and, yeah. and learn from those as well. And that's that degree of humility that we take from martial arts, right? Yeah. When we win, instead of jumping on our opponent's bodies and, you know, doing all that stuff. Uh, no, that we appreciate the victory and take lessons from that as well, right? Yeah. And I and I know somebody who has a friend who is a highly highly successful businessman, and he told mm -hmm. he once he once visited his office, and you know he was looking at the uh, the things he had on the wall, right? And he had mm. his Harvard business degree, you know, Harvard yeah, MBA, yeah. and he saw he mm -hmm. saw my friend looking at it, and he said, "Oh yeah, you see my Harvard MBA." He goes, "You know mm -hmm. what I?" He said, "Look at what's over there." And it was a chapter 11 from his first business. And he goes, I learned more uh -huh. from that than I ever learned at the Harvard MBA. <laughs> I like it. I'm, I'm going to steal that story for you. Yeah. I like that story. Uh, yeah. Too many people. Yeah. Too many people live on, on their trophies. Right. And yeah. that's, that's a, that's a dangerous thing. Um, it's interesting. You say that. I remember there was a day I was cleaning out one dojo. We were moving to a different mm -hmm. dojo and I took all the trophies and put them in the truck and brought them to the dump. Now, the only regret I have is that I wish I had, had repurposed them and given out to the kids. But sure. it was a moment in my life when I wanted to take that past and just put it behind me, right? Mm -hmm. It's okay to acknowledge those things. And, I, and I'm not saying to people they shouldn't enjoy their trophies and their rewards. They, they should. Um, but interest, it was an interesting ex experience for me. And it really taught me, you know, let's look forward. A trophy, no matter how cool it is, mm -hmm. right? Um, spirit of full disclosure, I'm a New England Patriots fan. I live in Maine. Okay. <laughs> But it's interesting because the attitude – Tom Brady told this great story about when he was at Michigan. Mm -hmm. And he, he was talking to this old uh, – was, I think he was the longest tenured uh, guy on the on Michigan football staff. He was an equipment manager, been around forever through all the championships, right? And he asked, uh, he asked the guy, he said, of all those championship rings, which one's your favorite one? And the guy said, the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Br and Brady took that, right? And he uses that story now. He talks about that when he was asked about his rings. He said, which one's your favorite one? He said, the next one. <laughs> that's a good imprint to take into business, huh? Yeah. And yeah. I think that that's a great way to end our conversation mm -hmm. today. We're bumping mm -hmm. up against the end of our time. But yeah, it's always to, it's, it's on to the next challenge. It's nice to look back, yeah. celebrate what you've done, learn from your, you know, your failures and your mistakes. Mm -hmm. And, and move forward uh, to the next challenge. So, Jim, before we go, mm -hmm. um, if you'd just like to tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can learn more about you and contact you. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, just come to the senseileader.com. And when you do, just subscribe there. There's a free open membership, and that gives you access to a lot of our online uh, resources and whatnot. And makes you part of the Sensei Leader movement. And you'll get a free free ebook of, edition of the Sensei Leader as well when you sign up. But uh, no, really appreciate you you doing that because we need we need to get people back focused on this idea that you know hey we're people you know people always challenge me to sum up leadership and I'll say I'll say it this way first of all you lead people right yeah. leadership is sharing a leader shares and that's yeah. a genuinely human experience right mm -hmm. yeah and probably mm -hmm. probably one of the most fundamental experiences and maybe what yeah. 
differentiates us from the animals in many ways. Could be, could be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, well, listen, Jim, this has been fantastic. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline CRM. And I hope you come back and talk to me again soon because I got a feeling we have lots and lots more to talk about. Oh, likewise, come on Walking the Walk too. I think we'll have a good conversation. Okay, you can yeah. share your adventures there. Okay, Absolutely, cool. would love to.